So I just took a look at the Sorcerer's Stone game. But there's no way I could have summed the whole thing up in a 10 minute video. I know I could have just made a longer video, right? But uh, I don't think I have that many faithful fans out there willing to watch a double length Bruce video. That's a lot of Bruce. I hope I'm wrong there. I hope I do have fans like that. If you're able to make it through my last video and this one, wow, <laughs> you're good. And if you're up for that challenge, make sure you watch my last video first. Anyways, now is the time to set our time turners back three turns because once again, we're playing Harry Potter. Like many video game heroes such as Mario and Link, Harry doesn't talk in this game. Because of this, Ron kind of takes control as the leader. Come on Harry, follow me. Let's go after him. Let's go and see what he wants. Um, Ron, I don't know if you know this, but I am the world famous sole survivor of the Killing Curse. I'm not taking orders from anyone, especially not some poor ginger kid. And you know how in a lot of games swimming sucks? Well here, flying sucks. And you always have to fly through rings. Well, if it worked for Superman, it'll work for Harry Potter. Now the house points, what's up with them? You get points for doing simple things like killing rats and pushing blocks. But how? There's no teachers around. Before you start each class, you have to race through an obstacle course to get there on time. And if you don't get there on time, the teacher takes away house points. You're late for Herbology. Five points from Gryffindor. But... Explain Snape here. Library books, by definition, are not to be taken from the library. I'll just confiscate that, thank you. So at first I was late to class. A common mistake even for muggle kids. And I got house points taken away for it. But here I actually broke the rules. And Snape, the douchiest teacher of them all, doesn't take any away. That's strange. Now, as we saw, the game ended with Gryffindor winning the House Cup. So are the points you get in the game worthless, or can the game's ending change depending on how badly you played it? I know I said Snape was the douchiest teacher, but is he really? Ah, Potter has found the sloth brain. So where was it, Potter? Within your own head? <laughs> when worse comes to worse, he's not the one sharing a body with Voldemort. Professor Quirrell placed these platforms to test his students, but I can't figure out how to get at them. I think I need to attend the Defense Against the Dark Arts class before I can stand on them. But you can't attend Defense Against the Dark Arts without getting up those platforms. You know what, I'd be surprised if this cross-eyed horsehead girl was smart. When you think about it, all the teachers are kind of jerks for making a game out of getting to class on time. The way I see it, the Hogwarts faculty is like your typical high school faculty. You know, first of all, you got that teacher who's just Satan in the flesh. But then you got that teacher who thinks he's funny, but really isn't. And then you got that teacher who's also a coach and totally favors the preps and the jocks. And then you have that drama teacher who claims that the musical auditions are meaningful, but in reality, they've already precast the whole show, giving the lead parts to students they know outside of school. And I wasted four years taking drama class, but I kind of get the last laugh because the musical ends up sucking and my life is wonderful. What I'm saying is, all the teachers suck. Now Hagrid, what a git. He makes me go to Gringotts and get money to help his dragon. Is it my money I'm getting out of the vault? Hagrid's a sponge! And we're not even dating! I'm off to the leaky cauldron for a few butterbeers if you need me. I need you! I'm 11! Well, off to Gringotts. Before you can open a vault, the goblins make you collect forms on the slippery floor. Form schmorms! You want proof that I'm Harry Potter? How's this? I'm Harry Potter, you goblin! And then we move on to this. Long story short, it's not as fun as Escape from Gringotts. Now, I know I talked about the peacock, but not enough. First up, why does Ollivander have a peacock? 
Wands are made from phoenix feathers, unicorn hair, dragon heartstrings, you know, mythical creatures, peacocks. I mean, I think they're real. In order to get a feather, you have to step on top of the peacock until your feather bar fills up. But the peacock can still run away. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but if the peacock is in between the ground and my shoe, shouldn't it be refrained from moving? It's not magic, it's a damn peacock! You also have two other shops to stop by. The Owl Emporium, run by the Crypt Keeper, and the Menagerie, which has jump roping mice. And all I got was a stupid little owl? But each time you get an ingredient, you have to go back to Gringotts, do this again, and this again. This Diagon Alley portion of the game, it takes up a pretty good fraction of the game. Even though in the book he never left Hogwarts, they made this shit up! And after getting all those ingredients for that stupid dragon, then Hagrid gets rid of it! And now we're in the Forbidden Forest. Following all the other inaccuracies, you don't get split up with Malfoy. Everybody goes through the forest alone. But characters will still show up to give you tips. Don't get lost, Potter. Remember, these woods can be very dangerous. Wow, Draco really cares about Harry. Isn't that cute? Follow the silver blood to find the unicorn. That's right. Follow the trail of blood. It always leads to a happy ending. Okay, one more part I gotta mention is the chess game. I've defeated most of the pieces, Harry. But I don't think I can go on. It's up to you now. Oh, so now I'm the leader, is that how it is? I don't know squat about chess, but I think here you have to get the pieces to get as close to each other as possible until they kill each other. So, one piece murders another piece, and then that murdering piece explodes. I have two theories here. One, a piece commits homicide. Knowing now that they will never get into chess heaven, they self-destruct as an honor suicide. And two, he just kills himself because when you're a giant living chess piece, life's not really worth living for anyways. And there's not much to say about the other tasks. Fluffy, the keys, devil snare. I mean, I guess the dirty side of me could make a joke about what's going on here. But I won't. All right, well, the bad thing about making a two-part episode is I have to make two endings. Okay, I got one. I just want to thank all my viewers out there. I cannot Hogwarts express my gratitude for you tuning in. And if you subscribe, 10 points to the Hogwarts house of your choice. What can I say? I'm saving all my good material for the next video. Can't wait for you all to see it. Assuming that you will. Well, till next time, hopefully.